All right, so on the Ram 3500 today, I've been wanting the audio buttons on the back of the steering wheel. So I can't find a 23 and up 2500 steering wheel because there is a little bit of a difference. So I bought a 2019 or whatever the new body style half ton steering wheel with the audio controls. So the steering wheel is a little bit different, the splines and stuff. So I don't think you can directly mount the 1500 steering wheel, but I took the buttons out of it and I'm going to try to, so the wiring harness is a little bit different. So I'm going to try to splice the uh, pins out of the 1500 steering wheel into the 3500 steering wheel you know pull the pins out put them in the plug because i think all that's the same so we're going to try that so i'm going to hook my battery terminals uh so don't hopefully don't blow the airbag up i don't know if that's possible but safety first right so got the batteries unhooked so let's get this uh steering wheel popped out or the airbag popped out and the steering wheel took apart and see what we can do let's do it 2024 ram 3500 i popped the steering wheel out so this is a tradesman or i popped the airbag out and the the gate or the buttons off of it so this one don't have the audio controls on the back of the wheel and i bought a steering wheel out of a 1500 2019 2020 i don't remember the year model the new body style so this is the plug that plugs into the clock spring it's very similar to the one in here but it's not exactly the same so what i'm doing don't know if it's going to work or not but this plug here plugs into the uh, buttons in the steering wheel um for the voice control and your menu buttons so the one on the 1500 that's where the buttons for the uh, audio controls go to. They plug right into this wire. So I've already started taking these apart. You can see I pulled that wire out right there. And I'm going to put them into this plug and see if it works. So who knows, but I peeled some of this wire back and I'm going to pull this apart, stick them in there and plug it up and see, we'll see what happens. So let's do that. All right, so to get these wires out of this plug here, I'm using a 1.27 millimeter Allen wrench. Um, and I just push down on this little silver um, tab inside here. So it's only three wires for the audio controls. Looks like a blue with a gray strap. A... Let's see, what is it? A brown or a gray. Don't really have anything marks on it that I can tell. And then looks like a gray with a red or, or maybe a gray with an orange strap. Are the three wires for the audio control. So I'll try to do this one handed. I didn't bring all my camera stuff with me. So I don't have a tripod. So basically push down on this. Well, probably too much, but it popped it in there, so. There we go. So I can prize that back up. I did on this one. I don't know if you can see it or not. See that little tail sticking up? I popped it back up, so this one, it's not sticking up because it's bent down, so. There's two of the three wires. Let's pop that last one out. There we go. Now the audio buttons are free from the harness. And cross your fingers that <laughs> this works. <laughs> uh, now I'm assuming this orange 
fuzzy tape is some kind of anti-static something. So I'm going to, when I put this on, I'm going to run it all right and uh, wrap it with this same kind of tape off of this other harness. So hopefully it sticks good. But for right now, I'm just going to plug it in and plug the airbag back up, hook everything up and see if the audio buttons work. So let's do this. So all these are plugging in real good. Um, I've got one more to plug in here. We'll see if I can do this on camera and in the right slot. So the first two went right there. And then this one with the orange strap, I believe it goes in this one next to the wire on the end. Let's see if I can get situated here to do that. There we go. All the others went real easy, but I wasn't trying to film with them, so. Anyway, that's all plugged up. Cross your fingers. Let's, uh, let's hook everything back up and see what happens. All right, so hooking these, uh, battery terminals back up hopefully this works we'll see So you can see my buttons and obviously that's not a permanent location. So let's try the radio out here. Oh yeah, that's working. So well, that works. So now the problem is mounting these to the back of the steering wheel because there's no cutouts on the back of the steering wheel so i'm gonna have to do some uh modifications there but yeah the buttons work so i'm happy with that and uh i can i guess be a little bit safer driving on the road adjusting my radio so let's uh let's get this steering wheel off here and see if we can't uh, mount these uh buttons up good i almost forgot better take these loose again 13 millimeter. And I need an extension. Figures. All right, let's see if we can't wiggle this thing off here now. Yeah. No. Let's go compare this to the half ton wheel. All right, so I had read online that the 1500 steering wheel is different, and yes, it is. So I wasn't going to try to put this on. I mean, if it would have worked, I would have, but I knew there was probably going to be some differences, but. You can see here for the clock spring, this little groove, and this is the 3500, this is the 1500 wheel. So there is some differences. Not sure what all or if it could work. I'm not gonna count the splines because I'm not gonna use it. So they may be the same, they may not, I don't know. All I'm gonna do is try to match this cutout in this wheel. Now, maybe crazy, I don't know, but I can't find a wheel anywhere and it looks like the older style wheel would work because all this, I believe, is the same as the older style. I'm not sure if, um, you know, if the front side, the buttons would work or, you know, if it would all line up or how it would look. But I believe the old style steering wheel would fit in the newer truck and the new style in the older. I've not tried that. I don't know, but it looks like it will to me. But all I'm going to do right now is 
try to buzz this out here maybe with the um, with a die grinder or something to kind of match this this style so let's see what we can do there so measuring down to right here with the screw uh i guess the little plate in the bottom of the switch goes 1.08 and that's basically touching i mean this ain't super accurate but touching there touching there same so that tells me everything should be pretty close to the same so basically all i have to do is cut this space out of this one so <laughs> hopefully we can do that neat and it look good feel good in the hand whatever so yeah i don't know we're gonna try though so the button goes like this so with this little taper part going toward the the center of the wheel and there's a little clip we can see that right here on the bottom side it's got a catch oh, there we go break the button guy so anyway i'm going to start by widening this hole out enough that this will sit down flush then we'll go from there Okay, so there is a left and a right button. They got, probably can't see, maybe, L, H, and a R, H. So this is the left. I was using the wrong one. So we'll, you, we'll need to put this one on this side. I think we need to trace this on here somehow. Let's do that. All right, so it kind of looks like it's fitting right now, but it's not exactly. So uh, off camera, I went ahead and just diagrammed a little bit more, and then I drilled a hole through it here on the top side so it comes through. You can see it there. Right through there. And uh, that's just for the wire to pass through. So I can put it in, kind of push it in place a little bit so it's still sticking up. So I went and traced around it with a pencil so I know not to go outside those lines. And we're just going to cut a little bit more uh, with the die grinder. And it's only took me a few minutes, so it's not that bad of a process. You could probably use a Dremel on this. I don't know, but uh, so far this is working pretty good as long as I don't go outside my line. So that's what we're shooting for. Okay, aside from being dirty, uh, everything lines up good. As you can see in there, the hole lines up good for the screw. It's actually pretty tight against the, the steering wheel, so it don't feel bad. So, yeah, I think it's going to work. The other one has a channel cut here for the wiring, but it don't look like it's going to hit anything. So, I'm just going to leave that for right now. And um, let's get started on this side. Coming for the Not sure what good it's doing or what it's for but this fuzzy looking tape i went ahead and stuck it on the wires that i'd um peeled it off of and we'll tuck it back in the steering wheel across for the buttons um if somebody knows what that's for let me know i assume it's for something to do with static electricity i don't know if that's true or not 
could just be for noise. I don't know. But anyway, that's what I'm doing. So let's uh, finish wrapping this up, get the wires tucked, and put everything together, see what it looks like. So I kind of tucked the wire in where the original wire is, and uh, it fits good, looks good. The wires reach to where they should. Um, I believe everything will be okay. So let's see if we can't get the front piece in here and put the buttons in and uh, make sure they line up good when we screw it down. So let's try that out. Let's make sure we got the right button. There's the left hand. Get our wire plugged up. There's our right hand. Well, let's hope that these plugs don't get in the way. I might have to cut that groove after all. I don't know. But there was a groove in the other steering wheel for the wire. So let's see if everything clears. Nope. It's hitting the wire. So we need to cut a groove right there for the wires to go in. I yeah, should have done it to begin with, but what happens when you try to be lazy? All right. So we'll cut right down through there on both sides to give the wires a place to lay. You can see here on this screen what has the the slots cut for the wires in there. So we'll just match that up. The air compressor's finally quit. This one is the right hand side. We kind of got it where it goes, sort of. And that gives us a place for the wire to lay. Hopefully that should be good. I believe that'll be okay. All right. It's everything plugged up. So now we gotta just put them screws in and hopefully that lines up pretty good. All right, everything's going together 
good so far. Now let's try these. Hopefully they're not off too bad. Okay, hit our first snag. The screw doesn't want to reach. Catching like one thread. There we go. Now, well, that one's on there. And we caught more than one thread, so that's good. Let's try this one now. I think this one is too. So, not perfect, but not bad. Not sticking up too much. I'll take that. Put these little covers back on here. Now, tradesman wheel with the uh, Buttons on the back. Now I'm sure you could take a Dremel and kind of make that fit a little better, but you know what? It feels good. It don't, you, know, you don't feel no sharp edges or snags anywhere. So I'm just going to run with it and see what it does like that. Don't forget to put this thing back in. Now let's, uh, Stick this back in the truck and uh, test it out. All right, now remember this clock spring has to go in this little groove on the bottom of the wheel. Probably help if I lined it up in the right splines. <laughs> My wheel was a little crooked when I took it off, so there, slid right into place. The clock spring is lined up where it should be. All right. That 
plugs into the clock spring. This goes to the airbag. This goes to the airbag. Well, this is actually the horn. The horn wire needs to go to the airbag. Clock spring's plugged in. Got the bolt to go back in. It's looking good. Now, steering wheel is on, buttons in the back, everything out here seems to work. Now, I'm no genius. This, I hate this. Now, yes, I would prefer a standard shift, but my power wagon was a 2015 model, had the shift uh, limiter buttons right here. It makes more sense because if I'm cranking down on this wheel, going around a curve or whatever and needing to shift gears, I'm having to find this button. Now, this might work fine when you're cruising down the interstate and, you know, gear down for a heel or limit your gear for a heel or something, whatever. But when you're truly driving and working this truck, this is in the wrong spot. This should never be on the steering wheel. It should be at least out here on this um shifter stock this is not a good design in my opinion it, this this shouldn't be here for a, a heavy duty work truck it should be out here somewhere where you always know where it's at there's no guess in trying to find it it's right where you need it you know this time you know if your wheels turned it's over here or down here or up here you know you're constantly trying to find this especially in the curvy mountains uh, where i live and work this a lot this this is not good for where i'm at so Anyway, there's my rant. Let's stick the airbag in and uh, test this bad boy out. Alright, so the airbag wire's plugged up. Here's the horn. See, our springs are ready. Now, let's put these battery terminals back on and try this out. I'm excited. Harbor Freight gear wrenches. All right, so check this out. Now that's awesome. I'm glad to have that. That's been bugging me since I got this truck. Well, there's what we've uh, ended up with. I know it's not perfect, but it, like I say, it feels good. You don't snag or catch on it. And uh, let's see the other one there. Yeah, it's, um, it's there. I am excited to have that done. That, that's been bugging me for well, ever since I bought the truck, and my 2015 power wagon was a tradesman. And it, same thing, it didn't have the buttons on the back of the steering wheel, but it was, um, you could buy the wire and, and the back cover of the steering wheel, and it had the buttons, uh, or the places for the buttons and the buttons with the kit. So it was really cheap. I, or, well, I mean, I say really cheap, probably like 100 bucks, I can't remember, but, um, you know, you didn't have to do any kind of, 
programming on the truck it just automatically works so same thing on this one uh it just takes off work it don't have to program but like i said i couldn't find a steering wheel for one of these trucks and i'm saying i would assume if a man did it would be really expensive so you know a couple hundred dollars anyway i bought that steering wheel there at a pick and pull junkyard for 75 bucks and um got the buttons so i found the wire um on uh, ebay for like 40 some 50 bucks just for the wire and harness which wasn't the buttons with it i'm not sure how much the buttons are if you can find them and um you know you'd have to do like i did so I, i'd say most people will buy just the whole steering wheel swap out the whole steering wheel and be done but this didn't take me long you know i probably got a couple hours into this and um 75 bucks so yeah wasn't that bad so i'm i'm tickled it's gonna be uh a lot better than it was so anyway let's uh let's get a hair and get on to something else <laughs> 